Hi and welcome. Hi and welcome. The Facts and Blog and Podcast. Hi and welcome to episode 56 of the Facts and Blog and Podcast. Today, Emily and I have a very special guest. Emily, would you like to do the honors of introducing who's on the show with us today? I would love to. Um, this is a really exciting podcast for me. This kind of is a throwback for me. Um, I did my graduate studies at Georgia Southern University, and Georgia Southern is known for a few things. Uh, really, they're all shooting related. We have an awesome shooting sports education center down there. It's an indoor rifle range and archery range where we teach classes for the public. We teach classes for students in campus rec. It's really just an awesome place to get some education about firearms and archery. But another claim to fame we have there is an incredible women's rifle program. You know, it's NCAA. It's something a lot of people don't think about when they think of the NCAA. You know, they think basketball, football, but the NCAA has an awesome rifle program and Georgia Southern's women's team is super awesome. And they have a really cool coach uh, who I got to know while I was working at the Shooting Sports Center during my grad degree there. So today we have the women's rifle coach from Georgia Southern University, Sandra Werman on the podcast. Hi, Sandra. Hello there. Thank you so much for having me. We're, we're so glad to have you. I, I was talking to Dustin about some potential people to have on the podcast. And, and with this being an Olympic year, you know, I think maybe a lot of our listeners saw some rifle events on TV or saw it, you know, just some recaps online. But I think a lot of people don't know the sport very well. So I wanted to have you mm -hmm. on to just kind of talk about it a little more. But before before we get into the sport uh, as a whole, why don't you just tell us a little bit of your background and what brought you to this place in your life in Georgia? Well, thank you. Um, well, I'm just starting my fifth year. So I completed four years and then uh, tagging on to a little bit of information about the, the program as a whole. It is in its eighth year. So it started out, um, there was, the man who started it was, he did a great job, but he was not from our sport. And then the second year there was a part-time coach who was also a full-time sheriff. And at the end of those four years, we had started to get some traction and it had gotten to the point where a full-time coach was, was really in order to, to take it to the next level because uh, both, both gentlemen had been part-time. So at that moment, I was the volunteer assistant coach at the Citadel, which is just one of the premier ranges in the country. I mean, almost as good as the range that we have here. Almost. Um, <laughs> and when Georgia Southern would come, you could see the team working so hard to figure out solutions and better ways to do things. And it was just such a, a cohesive, collaborative dynamic. Um, and I thought that is something special. Those girls are something special and that program is something special. So when this job became open, uh, I applied and I had been out of the sport for 20 plus years at that point. I'm a product of the NCAA system and I, I went into corporate HR and during those years of post NCAA experience, I increasingly recognized how much of my quality of life could be pinpointed back, could hinge back to all of the things I learned as a student athlete and all of the things I learned connected to my sport. Um, Olympic style precision rifle shooting is hugely a mental sport. Once you get the dynamics down of loading, aiming, trigger squeeze, follow through, breathing, sight alignment, and sight picture, then the rest of the canvas involves mental effort. And all of those things were useful to me on the line and then also off the line in my life. So I felt like I wanted to come back and contribute in some way, both to the sport and, and to the young people. So that's, that's how I ended up here. So Sandra, then just to, you know, maybe take it, you know, one step, you know, previous to that, you said you were out of it for a while working in corporate HR, but how did you get into it as an NCAA athlete? You know, how did you kind of, you know, in your, in your student athlete days, you know, how, how did you get started? You know, how does one work up to it? Because I think it's interesting. You see people uh, in any Olympic sport 
And sometimes it's mm-hmm. like, well, what did you do? Like, did your parents get you into gymnastics when you were three? Or like, how, how does this how does this kind of uh, work, especially when there are collegiate level, obviously, NCAA sanctioned uh, teams and events for this? So maybe just a little bit of background about how, how you personally got started and just in general, how do people get started in this realm, even pre-college days? Sure. Um, Well, personally, I got started because I'm an only child who grew up in the middle of nowhere, New Mexico, uh, with just my parents. So when I was born, and by the way, in New Mexico, they issue a life membership to the NRA right along with your birth certificate. Um, That's actually a joke. Um, (laughs) Wow, New Mexico uh, listeners, let us know if that's true. (laughs) Um, so uh, my mother says when I was born, my dad said, a girl, what do I do with a girl? And then he said, Oh, she'll do what I do. So it was hunting, fishing, car repair, firearms, you know, the whole thing. And he was a gunsmith, um, as a young man. So reloading and guns were just a a big part of his day-to-day living, even once he went on to have a different career. So when I was 10, I started in a junior rifle club and this is where you get on to a a pretty typical path that can ultimately lead to uh, collegiate shooting. Um, You start with your junior rifle club, um, usually with uh, a 22 and or an air rifle, um, and you just keep practicing uh, shooting matches, getting better. um, And then as you approach college age, you start canvassing uh, programs and reaching out to coaches. Awesome. Very good. And where did you where did you compete? What what school were you at as a as an athlete? I went to St. John's University in Queens, New York, um, who had a range in the basement right underneath uh, the security department. Um, and around 1996, though, they they disbanded the program. Gotcha. Wow. Well, that's that's quite a bit of jet setting <laughs> New yes. Mexico to New York and then, uh, you know, down to down to Georgia Southern. That's uh, that's yeah. that's pretty wild. I know. And as I mean, as somebody who kind of did have a journey like that. I think I think especially with, you know, shooting sports, sometimes you just have to go where the program is because not every school has an awesome shooting sports program. Uh, You know, personally, that's what I did, you know, for Clay Targets. I found the school with the best program. It was in Missouri, you know, a thousand miles away. So that's Mm -hmm. what I did. So it sounds like that's that's kind of what you did, Sandra. And that's that's awesome. Absolutely. And so much so uh, that I did not even I didn't visit the campus. I I looked on a map and Queens, New York, look very close on the map to Manhattan. And I thought, oh, well, that's that's swell, isn't it? And then once you get into Queens, you realize it's not really it's not just down the block. Um, But yes, fish out of water barely begins to describe my transition from the West Coast, the Middle East or middle part of the country or to New York City. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the firearms that are used um, in this sport. And and even if you just want to pick out some Mm -hmm. That, that you use at Georgia Southern, you know, what are, what are the, you know, calibers we're talking about? What are the platforms we're talking about? Um, you know, cause these look very different, you know, than what we typically see, you know, here in our own facility and, and maybe what a lot of uh, our audience and our, our customers shoot on a day-to-day basis. I mean, I know just looking, you know, at, uh, uh, you know, the Olympic, um, you see just a very different, type of firearm. And uh, so if you wouldn't mind just kind of walking us through, you know, those platforms and, and what it is you actually use. Sure. Um, we are, we're a Walther school and Walther is a, a German manufacturer and many of the top firearms in our sport and biathlon also are, are of, of uh, European manufacture. So fine work bow, Walther, on shoots. Um, in the States, uh, Turbo is an American made gun. And in fact, one of the young ladies on the team um, shoots one of those. Um, the, the small bore piece of our sport is a 22 bolt action single shot rifle. Um, and then the air rifles, also the, the same manufacturers, uh, that is a, a 17 caliber, basically, you know, pellet rifle. Um, it, they have, uh, in my day, the air guns were side, had a side cocker on it, and every shot you had to, to pump it. 
Um, these days, they've got um, air cylinders that we refill with a, a scuba tank um, that, we, that we have in the, the team room. Gotcha. So tell us a little bit more, since this might be a little uh, a little closer to home for some of our uh, audience, is just about the the twenty twos that you shoot. You know, are these sure. all just kind of, you know, factory deals that come from these competition lines, or you know, what what are the the pieces that you know are in a typical you know specked out you know version of one of those uh, for for competition in the NCAA. Sure. So they they do typically come off the line. The Olympic style precision rifle lines uh, come ready to to meet the needs of of the sport. They will have uh, an adjustable butt plate, an adjustable cheek piece. Uh, the idea being you bring the gun up to you. You don't bring your head down to the gun. Um, and I'll tell you more about why that is um, in just a minute. Um, they'll have a a grip. So if you're a right handed shooter. Um, you'll have a grip that is right under the adjustable trigger that is typically two stage and both stages can be adjusted for length of pull and weight. The sights are peep sights, which most people are surprised to discover that there's no magnification. It's just, you know, a rear circle at the end, a rear circle at the front, and you line it up around the, the, the black bull down at 50 feet in the case of, of NCAA. It's 50 meter on the outdoor, on the international uh, uh, canvas, but here at the NCAA, it's 50 foot indoors. Wow. Um, one, one of the joke, getting a gun custom fit. Now it comes prepared to be custom fit, but then the athlete has to take the time to do all of the adjustments to custom fit it to themselves. And one of the jokes I say about it is the uh, space shuttle has pitch, yaw, and roll, and so do these rifles. <laughs> so you have to go into it with a lot of patience. It's it's forming a relationship. You you don't take it out of the box and then you're you know you're shooting it later on that afternoon. It it really is, in my opinion, very wise to set a parameter, set a time frame of okay, I'm going to spend three to four days just working on the the minutia the little details of fitting this rifle to me i think that's that's you know something a lot of people don't really think about uh, when they get a long gun, but I feel like anyone that's shooting, you know, long guns for precision, even, you know, in competition, clay targets, even with shotguns, the fit of that gun is so important. And I think people that uh, shoot a lot of handguns, you know, might not think about that aspect of it as much, but somebody who comes from, you know, kind of a rifle shotgun background, I mean, fit is, it can change your game. I mean, it can, you know, one little adjustment of your, your cheek plate, you know, can help you gain a few targets or, you know, get some more bullseyes. I mean, it's, it's incredible, but, uh, you know, I think, I think with these guns specifically, I, I know when I was at Georgia Southern, I got to take a class to become certified level one instructor for small bore and air rifle, uh, which was super cool. And one of the things we learned is, I mean, staying so still is, mm -hmm. is a huge part of your sport. I mean, you're learning how to yes. control your breathing. You're learning how to control your muscles in a certain way so that there is no movement in your entire body while you're taking that shot. And that's, that's incredible. So what kind of, when you're trying to teach that and athletes, you know, what kind of training are you going through with your, with your team, Sandra? Like what does a normal day look like for you guys? Um, we, we do have a piece of it that is mental management and that could take the form of, oh, first, let me give you the schedule. So <laughs> we shoot Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday for four hours a stint. So it's 20 hours a week that wow. I have them. Um, th we spend a couple hours a week on mental management, which could be reading a book. For example, when the freshmen come in, I and or maybe the team, just depending on how it goes, we read with winning in mind by Lanny Basham together. And when Great I mean book. together, I mean, we sit around and we take turns reading a paragraph, each person in a round robin, and then we discuss it. It's that important. I need them to understand the mental management piece of our sport, the mindfulness piece of our sport, the positive self-talk piece of our sport, the positive outward talk 
piece of our sport. Um, you know, if you come off the line and you've had a hard day, I need you to be processing how to field those challenges, those things that you learned on the on the line into something positive and not to come off and say, oh, I'm the worst or telling me all about that weirdo shot that got away. I don't care about the weirdo shot. I, as a coach, I care about the shot after that. Did you analyze the weirdo shot, find out what you could have done better and then immediately started doing it better? Or are you just in a wallowing self-pity um, party that, uh, that, you know, just is, is not going to be productive to, to you or, or to your, to your teammates. So mental management is a huge part of it. Um, the technical pieces of our sport are also very important. If you cut follow through short, that's going to impact how precise you are. If you're going from a nice trigger squeeze to a jackrabbit trigger, that's going to show up. Um, if you are not putting the rifle into your shoulder with the same pressure and the same cheek weld each time, that is going to show up. So that that consistency of mindset and that consistency consistency of shot process and execution is is just critical. Um, we shoot uh, at, at NCAA's, which is indoors, um, 50 foot. And we are shooting at a bull that is an inch across. I just measured it. And the 10 ring, there are scoring rings that go from four points up to 10 points. The 10 point ring, and I'm making air quotes, is the period, the size of a period at the end of a sentence. So you are That's holding incredible. it freestyle in standing with no magnification, shooting at a period at the end of a sentence, 50 feet away. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> There's no yeah. room for error at that point. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and it's I think I think when you watch the Olympics and you see these athletes with these guns that have a lot of moving pieces and they're, in, you know, it kind of looks like a spaceship almost. You're thinking, oh, how hard could that be? They probably just point and shoot. But I think our listeners hearing this, they're going to realize it's it's not easy. I mean, you know, you guys are doing this with just normal sights, uh, freestanding. I, I know there's different positions, right, Sandra? Could you yeah, give us a little in, more insight on that? In small bore, there's prone and kneeling as well as as standing. So prone and kneeling do have a, a sling that attaches to your arm and then attaches to the rifle. Uh, and that is one of the, the support elements. Um, but you're still, you know, just just really it's the, it's the points of contact that are steadying you. Wow. And, and do those typically all those different types of positions are those normally present at, you know, each competition? You know, is it or do people tend to specialize or does everybody pretty much have to run through, you know, the, the same sorts of, uh, of stages for, for these competitions? Um, well, everyone certainly has their favorite position, and it could be prone, standing, or kneeling, um, but they also all have to do all of the positions. So with the air rifle, we shoot 60 shots all in the standing position. In small bore, the 22, it's unlimited ciders in kneeling, followed by 20 record shots in kneeling. Then it's unlimited shots in the prone position, followed by 20 record shots in prone, then unlimited shots in standing followed by 20 record shots. So it's 60 record shots at the end of the day that tally your total cumulative score. And when, when you say unlimited, uh, you mean like these athletes have a little bit of time to get in position and practice those shots and see where they're at? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Once you're, once you're, you, you get to, to side in to use a, awesome. a, a common frame of reference for, for shooting. Um, in, in small bore, they have one hour, 45 minutes to complete 60 record shots with however many sighting shots they, they want to make. So they, they do have a, a block set of time to accomplish what they, what they need to do. So when I say unlimited ciders, it's a little bit of a misnomer in that, yes, you can shoot as many ciders as you want, but you still have to get your record shots, um, on target in order for your, your performance to count. 
Gotcha. Yeah. And just and just so everybody knows a lot of at these bigger competitions, you know, in these sanctioned NCAA competitions, uh, we have there's I, I had to, I used to have to set them up on the range, but they're like these little boxes that go out there um, on poles so you can move the target as positions change. But basically that box has a little circle in the middle and they're they're shooting into that little circle, you know, trying to get that bullseye and they have a receiver you know, a little tablet almost back at their station. So when someone's taking their shot, they can, you know, take that practice shot and then look at that tablet and see where that shot landed in real time, which I think is really cool. You know, you're being able to see uh, exactly where, because that target, I mean, it's very magnified on, you know, you're basically, you're seeing kind of a drawing of that target on your tablet and you're seeing exactly in that tiny, tiny little circle where, on that circle you're you're shooting. So when you're practicing, you have those opportunities to start correcting. Yeah, it's almost like a video game. Yeah. The, the electronic targets, you Very know, you, much. you you shoot at the bull and you're you're shooting with live ammo. Sometimes people are confused that it looks like a video game but we are actually using live ammo and then you see on your basically video console where where the shot was. Um, and that's one of the reasons I like to bring out paper targets when we have home matches or if we're doing some kind of presentation about our sport so people can see what the athletes are actually shooting at because the video game piece of it really kind of distorts what they're accomplishing. But when you yes. look at the paper target and I say, you know, hang that 50 feet down range and you see the 10 ring there, that's the size of, of a period at the end of a sentence. That's what they're, they're actually doing. Um, so we are a Title IX parity sport for football, which I take a lot of pride in because, um, you know, the reality of university economics is that football play, pays for a lot of things in athletics, including my program. So we are very privileged and proud to be able to contribute back to them um, in some way. But I also think it's a little ironic that we are paired up because you cannot find two more opposite sports than women's rifle at Georgia Southern and football. So first of all, they ha football has male athletes. In the case of Georgia Southern, we are a female team, but in on the NCAA landscape and field of play, it's a co-ed team. I mean, it's, it's a co-ed sport. So when we go out to matches, we are competing shoulder to shoulder with men and other women. That's awesome. Uh, the superpower of football is running, kicking, throwing, tackling, and our superpower is the ability to stand as still as possible for extended periods of time. We have an hour and 15 minutes to complete 60 shots air rifle and standing, and then we've got an hour and 45 minutes to complete 60 record shots in small bore. So when we have our matches, you know, we start at 0800 and we end at 1300, and, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a, a low excitement sport um you know as, as compared to football which is which is high excitement but when it comes to focusing mindfulness the devil's in the details and nailing that 10 that is the size of a period at the end of a sentence um that is that is definitely a skill set that we have so when you talk about it being, you know, co-ed in the eyes of the NCAA and, and Georgia Southern happens to be, you know, female shooters, is that something that just kind of each school decides, you know, do they do they have the critical mass to take on both teams or mm -hmm. a fully co-ed team? Is that something that's just, you know, decided by, you know, your managing bodies or, or how does that come yes, into play? Exactly. In, in our case, in Georgia Southern's case, when football transitioned up to um, FSB level, um, they had to add um, some, some Title IX sports. So women's golf and women's rifle, since we have this amazing facility, um, it was a, a natural fit. Gotcha. So what was going on then in Georgia Southern in that facility before you, know, you, had, uh, you had that team? It was brand, well, it, the... The facility is new. I'm going to say it's about 10 years old now. Emily, does that mesh with your your timeline, yeah, your recollection? It's, it's uh, oh gosh, you know, I feel like it was brand new when I got there. But yeah, I guess it's it's probably been about that amount of time. But it is. It's a very new facility. So, uh, you know, Georgia Southern has not always had that facility. But, you know, once it was built 
exactly. You know, it was a no brainer to have the archery team and the rifle team. You know, we have a great archery team at Georgia Southern as well. There was a little bit of overlap, meaning they knew they wanted to start the program. The Shooting Sports Education Center was under construction, but there was a period of time where Shooting Sports was not ready to receive the team yet, but the team was here. So they shot over in a facility that we refer to lovingly as the Shooting Shack, but it was a, a, an unenclosed building that is now used for storage and it had hand crank targets. You'd put the paper target in the, the, the little carrier and then you would hand crank it down, <laughs> shoot, and then bring it back. So it, it was, as I said, not an enclosed building. So it was just cold as cold can be in the winter and just like Africa hot in the summer. Yeah. So as, it's uh, yeah. right over behind the uh, the recreation facility. And when I drive by sometimes I, I tip my hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've, shooting we, we've come a long way uh, since, since then. Have. You know, now Georgia Southern's Shooting Sports Education Center, you know, state of the art facility. We had the range done by Action Target. So all those targets, you know, you push a button, it comes back to you. You push a button, it goes away from you. You know, we have some awesome systems for the rifle team, but it, it was, it's really unique in the sense. I don't think there's another, at least when I was there, we were the only uh, shooting sports facility completely funded by a school on college campus and open to the public. You know, there's a lot of colleges that do have shooting centers like this for their rifle teams, or, you know, maybe they have a shooting center that is open to the public, but a lot of them don't have all those things together. You know, we were created by the school. We're funded by Campus Rec. You know, we're part of Campus Rec. That was, you know, and I say we because, you know, I mean, I was a student there. I'll always be a Georgia Southern Eagle. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a place I, I really loved. And to have something like that on college campus is super incredible. And I think mm -hmm. what you're doing with the, with the women's team is just awesome. You guys have had some incredible seasons, right? Since you've been there, you joined in 2017, which is when mm -hmm. I started working there. So how's it been since? Yeah, we're, we're really starting to get some traction. Um, my second year, uh, an athlete named Rose Kramer, who was a senior that year, she really, she really responded to the mental management piece of it. Like that, that was the piece of her particular puzzle uh, that was missing. And once she started applying that, um, she, she really took off and she made the national development team. She won the NCAA small bore qualification round and tied the national record and then went on to win third. We, at, at the NCAAs and in the Olympics, there's two pieces to our competition. There's the qualification phase, which is the 60 shots that I've been talking about. And then they have a finals phase where the top eight athletes from the qualification round throw out their scores and now are equal on the firing line. And in the case of, of small bore, uh, the, the 22, you start out with five shots in kneeling and then they tell you where everyone is. And then another five sh record shots in kneeling and they tell you where you are. And another five shots. And then you have nine minutes to switch your gun and your gear and yourself over to the next position and then shoot another five shots in prone. They tell you where you are, five shots in prone. They tell you where you are, five shots in prone. Then you get into stand and then you have another nine minutes to, to switch over to the standing position, including ciders. And then you have five record shots, then five record shots. And now people are starting to drop off. So now the eighth person, eighth place person at that point drops off, then seventh and sixth. So it gets to be almost like a sudden death wow. kind of a, an affair. And it, it really has brought a lot of excitement and engagement and, uh, and, and spectator verve to a sport that, you know, I mean, sometimes has been classified as having all of the action of an apple in decay. And, you know, and it goes on for hours. So unless you know what you're looking at, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's not immediately engaging, um, I, I will admit. Um, but she, she really did very well that year in a very visible way um, and came very close to making the Olympic team. Um, but that visibility turned 
many people's eye of raw to us where before it was, oh, you know, Georgia Southern, they've got that new program, good for them. And now it was, oh, they're, they're starting to go places. Um, prior to, to my first year, the team did win the Southern Conference Air Rifle title. Um, the year that Rosemary was, was here, the, there were seniors and people that had been working hard and just gathering their skill sets and their mental management hand over fist. And that whole team did very well. Um, and we are we are are growing um, in in a notable a notable way these days, and that's just we've had enough time and enough practice and enough engagement and enough exposure to the good information and the good equipment and the good facility and the good skill sets and the good work ethic that it's 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 happening for the program. So when you are going about, you know, building these teams, you know, in, in the collegiate realm, you know, is, is there, you know, recruiting involved? Is there tryouts involved? You know, what does it take for someone who's, you know, maybe finishing up high school that is looking for a program like this? What do they have to go through to be considered, um, you know, for, for the, for the school and for the team? Um, now I can only speak for myself. This is how I recruit. Um, I don't recruit on score alone. Um, in fact, one of the things we spend freshman year doing is deconstructing the idea that our sport is only about score, um, especially with young women, disconnecting score from self-worth is a necessary and important step to being able to get beyond what is score. If you're you know, the mind can only think about one thing at a time. So if you stop thinking only about score, what other good things are you going to find that's going to propel you um, on your, your path to your, your best self and, and your best sports performance? Um, so in my case, I, I'm not looking to hear all about your scores. I want to hear, first of all, I need to hear from you, you student athlete potential athlete. If I hear from your parents, that's already a red flag. Um, and I am looking for the diamonds who don't know that they're diamonds yet. And what I mean by that is they might just need one small thing. So like I talked about Rosemary, once she got mental management in her pocket, in her toolbox, she really excelled. So I'm looking for the ones who a want to be here because division one varsity, well, I mean, D2 or D3 for that matter, it's a lot of work. And the grit and the grind of being a student athlete, it might not be how you want your college career to look. So I, I'm looking to find the people who know that they that's what they want. They want to do the work. Um, they want to be part of the team. They want to compete because competing is putting ourselves through our paces to see what we can do to to excel and to thrive and to strive in adversity and and in accomplishment. Um, I'm looking for the ones who will lean in to the idea of team and work and will let me know that they want to be here. Um, oftentimes freshmen get here and they don't realize that they could have said no. Their coaches and their parents have them so hardwired that you will shoot in college that they get here and they find out what it's really like and they they just they can't do it. You know, if you are living an inauthentic life, you can only fake it for so long. So part of my recruiting process is really trying to find out what is your motivation for being a D1 athlete. I can teach you to shoot. I can teach you mental management, but I can't give you work ethic and I can't give you drive and desire. So a, a lot of my team ends up being the ones who are in development and, as I said, are diamonds but don't know that they're diamonds yet because they're, they're just missing some, some small piece of the puzzle to, to really be able to, to kick into their own gear. Um, and that's, that's kind of an unusual way to recruit um, but that's that, that's what I'm looking for. Unusual, but I'm sure fulfilling, you know, and I love what you said about, you know, finding people that want to do the work. I mean, it's like what you said earlier. I mean, you know, these girls are practicing, what, 20 hours a week? I mean, you know, you 
when you're a college athlete, you know, I was a college athlete. I was practicing a lot and training a lot and going on shoots. You know, you have to be comfortable like, hey, you're not going to have all your weekends to hang out with friends. You're not going to have all your weekends to go on trips, uh, you know, to the beach. You have to be training. You have to be at competitions. And if you're not comfortable giving up that, you know, peace. And a lot of times you want to find the people that they don't feel like they're giving something up for me. I mean, you know, going on those trips and getting to compete on a shooting team, you know, that, that was probably the biggest part of college that I remember. I mean, that was like my favorite part of college, you know, and that's what gave me lifelong friendships and lifelong lessons. And that's really what brought me to this table that I'm sitting at today. So I think, you know, anyone out there who has kids that are really interested in shooting and want to be part of a shooting sport, you know, uh, they make sure that that's what they want to do and, you know, give yeah. them the tools to succeed and find someone awesome like Sandra to teach mm-hmm. them. Cause I think there's a lot of coaches out there. You're right. That are just looking for scores. And that's not, that's not the coach you want. You want a coach that's going to help develop you in every way. And I think Sandra's done an awesome job with the team at Georgia Southern. And, you know, especially with shooting sports, they can be really tough mentally, especially as a woman. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, you're right. It's tough to separate the score from the self and it can be really difficult on just, it could be hard on us. You know, I mean, I remember Mm -hmm. days to this day, I remember days that I shot really badly and I was so mad at myself and you just, you have to develop these tools. I mean, my parents made me read with winning in mind, like Mm -hmm. every, every year I think I had to read it. So, uh, if anyone out there has read it, you know what it's about, you know, it's it's, shooting's all about mental, mental toughness. And I, that's what I love about these sports. You know, it's not just about being physically tough. It's also about being mentally tough. So I love that mm-hmm. you're developing that in your curriculum, Sandra. Thank you. Yeah. And so if people want to learn more just specifically about Georgia Southern's team, you know, where are some places they could go online, on social to, you know, maybe watch a match or kind of see a little bit behind the scenes? Where, where are the best places that we could point them? And, and we'll put those links in our show notes as well. Thank you. Um, I think the the main hub, the mothership of it all is going to be uh, the Georgia Southern Women's Rifle website, which has not only um, recruiting links and a, and a questionnaire um, that, that prospective athletes can fill out, but then it also has our schedule on there um, and then our team roster. Um, and the, the team is very active in social media. So uh, connecting either to the the Georgia Southern um, uh, Snapchat, Instagram, um, and Facebook, and then also the individuals on the teams, they have their their own platforms. Those are all great ways to follow along and 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 get the vibe of our team and and what we're about. Um, on match days, we do have an online protocol format system where you can watch the shots uh, for each athlete. So you're not actually watching the athlete shoot. You're just seeing the target and you're, you're watching the the shots post. Gotcha. Very cool. And and what are some, uh, what are some good organizations for people to look at who maybe they have children who are interested in the sport or maybe some kids in high school who are looking to, you know, get, more involved. Uh, what are some good resources for those people? Uh, USA Shooting is our governing body. Um, CMP is the Civilian Marksmanship Program, um, and they do summer camps. Um, in fact, a lot of the the collegiate athletes work these summer camps, um, and so it's coaching on three position and and air rifle, um, and it's it's a very worthwhile matching between college athlete and uh, uh, growing, evolving young shooters who are high school age or, or even a little younger. Um, local junior rifle clubs, uh, those are a great way to start. And even things like BB gun, like for, for younger kids, that's a great first introduction um, to what can lead up to our, our sport. There's a division, I'm going to use the word division, um, of our sport called Sporter, and that can be common in high schools and JROTC programs. Um, It doesn't have 
quite as fancy of a rifle and there's not quite as much equipment, uh, but it's the same positions, the same philosophies, um, the same mental management tricks, you know, at, at the high school level, they may be more basic that you're acquiring, but it's a solid foundation for what can then grow into something that's a substantial skill set um, and, and just one, one level below Olympic style precision shooting. Awesome. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Sandra. We had a blast talking to you today. And I think, uh, you know, Olympic rifle, air rifle, small bore rifle, it's, you know, it's NCAA. I mean, it's, you know, it's right up there with football. It's a D1 sport, you know, check yes. it out. See if, you know, the school near you that you're already going to for football games has a rifle team you can support and just you know, there's so many different shooting sports out there. I think there's something for everyone. So we love getting to chat with you today. Thank you. And one, one final thing I wanted to mention about the relationship between uh, Olympics and NCAAs are NCAA is a primary training ground for the Olympics. Awesome. When you look at the Olympic teams, um, most people will have come through the in the NCAA system, um, and then the the rest of the batch is normally from like the Army marksmanship unit. Say so, it's it, it's a very it's a substantial program um, as it relates to to shooting sports. Very cool. Very awesome. Well, yeah. Thank you so much, Sandra. Um, before we get going, uh, for those of you, you know, this is we're recording this on the 22nd, but today we launched our new comps, our new pistol comps. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so we did. we're super excited about those. If you want to enter to win your own comp, go ahead and check out the show notes. Check us out on social. We'll have a link there. Yeah, absolutely. So just go to factsandfirearms.com slash blog, click on episode 56. From there, you'll have all the links and all the notes from today's show with Sandra and the links and resources that she mentioned, as well as a link to the giveaway. And yes, we are giving away one of our new Exos uh, pistol comps that just came out today. Uh, so if you're looking on getting your, your hands on one, we'd love to hook you up and get you set with that. And uh, there will be daily entries for those as well. So you sign up, you get one entry, and then there's a whole bunch of different actions you could do visiting uh, uh, website pages and Facebook pages and all that kind of stuff. And those will be marked for daily entries as well. So thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you back here for episode 57. I am up the facts and blog